All right. Hey, folks, it is Faz here from Faz Lifts. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to train the beginner. Firstly, defining what a beginner is and then offering you a good solution on how to train and why. All right. So firstly, uh, yeah, thanks for making it onto my channel. Um, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. Leave a like, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you'd like to work with me towards your own physique and strength goals, there is a link in the description for you to get in touch. So training the beginner. Now, training the beginner presents a weird sort of uh, conundrum in that one, it's particularly easy to train the beginner. It's great. It's very easy to make beginner gains. So you can do pretty much anything and gain. Um, so that begs the question, why am I making this, making this video? Well, I'm making this video because there is a good way of training, which also sets you up for better gains down the road. So that's what I'm going to discuss here today. So as usual, I've got some notes. So first of all, let's just define what a beginner is. So level of development or strength typically isn't a very good, reliable indicator of beginner status. So for example, we've got here a picture of the rock <laughs> at age 15, just immediately just looks massive. Uh, and that's at age 15, um, very relatively untrained for him, but is in the kind of shape and actual lean mass that a lot of adult males will never reach without PEDs. So yeah, it's huge, but would be ranked as a beginner at that point. We also have uh, the Brit Andy Bolton, who was rumored to have deadlifted six plates aside on the first time he arrived at a gym. He went was he went on to deadlift a uh, thousand pounds. He was the first man to ever do that. So for him, deadlifting six plates aside, he was a beginner, and he progressed massively to get up to the thousand pounds. Six plates aside is about five hundred and seventy-two pounds, I believe. So he doubled that over the course of a of a lifetime. So you can't define a beginner by the level of development or by the level of strength. It's more about where they are relative to their ultimate potential. That's what it's about. So next up, you also can't define a beginner by the time spent working out. So on the other end of the spectrum, you could have exercised for years and still not be anything close to your potential. And I do believe that's kind of what happens to a lot of people when they just train ineffectively for years and decades, and they never reach their potential. You see me going about this all the time on my channel. Don't waste time. When you start, when you get to my age, you appreciate the fact that you've actually put in some good work and you've gained something and you've done something with your training career rather than just dabble in mediocrity where you could have been something special. So I encourage people to take charge of their training and really do well in the time they've got because oftentimes the only thing that actually stops us from gaining is father time sadly. And I'd rather you guys have made some good gains towards your potential before that has to happen. All right. So what actually defines a beginner is their ability to make progress relative to their overall lifespan. So a beginner should be able to gain weekly and perhaps even interweekly. So maybe they, uh, they definitely gain from Monday to Monday. They might also be able to gain from say Monday to Friday. Okay. An intermediate then is defined by gaining monthly or intermonthly and an advanced person would be gaining annually or interannually. So that's generally what we define as beginner intermediate advanced. It's a good system because that enables us to give us beginner adva intermediate advanced based on the spectrum of, of people out there and their individual potential. So anyway, what we, what we want to do is we want to talk about training the beginner in the case of like what what movement patterns do they need to do so i identify six basic movement patterns the first of which is the knee bend exercise all right now for the knee bend i would say barbell dumbbell variations would be like back squats machine variations will be squat machines and leg presses i would count the leg press as a knee bend variations which you could use oftentimes the leg press is the one that i go with with beginners because most beginners aren't brilliant at squatting. So rather than take the time to teach them how to squat, I would rather just put them on a leg press, make them go deep and then boom, we're good. We can just get to gaining without having to learn the movement pattern. Oftentimes, if you build up a bit of muscle, you build up a bit of strength, build up a bit of coordination in the legs, the leg, the leg, with the leg press, the squat becomes a lot easier. So we start with a knee bend variation. Next up, you probably guessed, is a hip hinge variation. The main sort of barbell dumbbell variations here are your deadlift and various types of deadlift as well. So stiff leg deadlift, Romanian deadlift, sumo deadlift, 
and then good morning type variations. Machine variations will be things like hyperextensions, even a glute ham raise, um, and various types of hyperextensions as well. But essentially just something whereby you can bend at the hips while keeping the back neutral to arched and keeping a slight bend in the legs and really drive forward the hips with the combined power of the back, the glutes and the hamstrings. That's the hip hinge. So that's the second essential movement out of the big six. Next up, we've got vertical pulling. Um, your basic variations here are your pull up, your chin ups and then assisted versions, okay? I think for a rank beginner, I generally prefer the chin up variations rather than pull up variations. So that would be um, underhand grip, roughly shoulder width. Prefer underhand to overhand for a beginner and to be fair, just in general as well. Next up, we've got horizontal pulling and that would be barbell and dumbbell variations and any kind of machine rows are acceptable too. Definitely want to be having one of those in your beginner routine. And next we get to the pressing we have horizontal pressing, which is arguably one of the least important, but it's the one that most beginners put most importance in, particularly males. But it's arguably the least important when it comes to overall body mass. So we've got barbell dumbbell variations, barbell and dumbbell bench press, and then any kind of machine variations. And again, this is very similar to the knee bend variations. If somebody is not suited to an exercise with the barbell or a dumbbell, it's just as easy to put them onto a machine and that works A-OK. -okay. Just to teach them, um, just to get them moving, really, just to get some muscle on them, just to get some coordination going without being exposed to the barbell, which has any number of issues when you're a beginner. And the final one is vertical pressing, barbell and dumbbell overhead presses, and then machine variations with the machine shoulder press. So putting this all together, this is basically what a beginner routine would look like. This is how I would envision it something like one to three sets of about eight to 12 reps done one to three times a week in with an exercise, one exercise from the knee bend, the hip hinge, vertical pulling, horizontal pulling, vertical pressing and horizontal pressing. Now, what would this look like as an actual example? So let's say your routine could be your basic barbell squat, deadlift, chin up or assisted chin up, dumbbell row, barbell bench, and barbell overhead press. That could be a big six. But equally, if you're not suited to any one of those, it could just be a leg press, hyperextension, pull down, cable row, machine chest press, and machine overhead press. That's just fine. That is A-OK. -okay. And th that version, the machine version, might actually be preferable because it might get the person locked in and working hard quicker than having to learn the barbell lifts and being able to stabilize those. There's nothing magical about the barbell lifts, all right? Particularly for a beginner who's just going to have stabilization issues, neural issues to begin with, and is gonna need a period of breaking in. I would rather get somebody just gaining. So that's where the advantage of machine exercise comes in, particularly for beginners. But don't get hung up too much on the exercise variations, just focus on the movement pattern. That's really most important. And then, trying to do it as frequently as possible. So if you can be getting get your beginner in the gym three times a week, doing that for three sets of 12, eight to 12, they're gonna see great progress. If they can only do it once a week, that's also good. At least they're still getting a full body in. So this gives them quite a lot of flexibility while hitting all the relevant areas and movement patterns every time they go to the gym. Because you may as well do the most bang for your buck when you're a beginner, because you can recover so quickly. You could do this on Monday and be stronger by Wednesday. That's the advantage of, have, of being a beginner. And that's how you string together very, very productive workouts over the first year of training. And that's how you get out of the beginner stage and move on to something else because you're bigger and you're stronger. So some closing words. Um, training a beginner can be deceivingly easy, mostly because you can pretty much do anything with a beginner and get results. This is a large part and portion of some of the results I see on social media from some PTs. They'll train beginners, get them some initial results, put them onto social media. It's a drastic change because perhaps they've lost a bit of body fat, perhaps they've gained some muscle. It looks like a very drastic change. Perhaps it's been over 12 weeks. Sometimes there are naughty supplements involved and all of a sudden the coach looks like a genius. But the reality is they're not. It's just beginner gains. You can do pretty much anything and get away with it. However, I always focus on if you're going to be able to do anything 
and get them results, I would rather then do the thing which is going to get them results, but also set them up for a good training life afterwards. Because it's not just about being a beginner, it's about gaining after that as well as an intermediate, as an advanced. So that's what my routine would look like. All right, folks, hopefully that was useful. Um, and hopefully it gave you an insight into how I train beginners for the best and quickest results uh, and the ones which set them up for good long-term success. So I'll call it there. If you've gotten this far and you haven't subscribed yet, please do hit the notification bell to get my videos um, directly to you. And also, if you'd like to work with me on whatever your goals are, go ahead and contact me via the um, form in the description. Okay. Right. I will speak to you guys next time. Take it easy.